Hi there, welcome back to my views and news. Two new stories. First one is from Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital, where PM Abi met with the Tigray representatives. He responded to some very tough questions, questions about alleged presence of Eritrean military in Tigray. What did he say? question about uh, TPLF joining federal government, questions about uh, IDPs uh, and he talked about the start of the war as well. How did the war start? While Gatacho was sitting alongside him, he uh, in a way told the Tigray representatives to speak the truth about how the war broke out between Tigray and the federal government. Second of all, the Eritrean Information Ministry issued a statement a few hours ago in response to uh, a speech by UN Assistant Secretary General for human rights, who a few days ago called Eritrea a lawless state, a state where there is no law. Eritrea seems to be infuriated by the remarks of UN Assistant uh, Secretary General for Human Rights. First of all, we know that PM Abi, Ethiopian Prime Minister, is holding meetings with representatives from all parts of Ethiopia. He has held meetings with representatives from Amhara region, Romia region, Benishangal Gumas. Uh, three days ago, he held a meeting with Orthodox Church elders. And uh, then uh, yesterday, uh, Tegarai representatives traveled to Addis Ababa and met with the Prime Minister. Around 200, around 200 Tigray representatives met with the Prime Minister. Gitacho, interim a president of Tigray, was there to Abraham Bale, Ethiopian defense minister who is a Tigrayan. He was also there. Uh, the representatives were from all parts of Tigray, religious elders, etc. They asked some very tough questions. They grilled the Ethiopian Prime Minister. One important question was about the sovereignty of Ethiopia. One participant said that who will protect Ethiopia's sovereignty and territorial integrity as Eritrean forces are in occupation of Ethiopian territories, Tigray territories. So who will protect Ethiopian borders? This is what Tigray, TPLF have been saying for months. They say that Eritrea is in occupation of Tigray territories and uh, Eritrea is in control of territories, uh, not just those territories uh, granted to Eritrea by EEBC, but uh, Eritrea is an occupation of more territories than granted to it by Ethiopia Eritrea Boundary Commission, which uh, gave a verdict in 2002. Eritrea denies being in occupation of any Ethiopian lands. We have seen statements from Eritrean Embassy to UK and Ireland. Eritrean Information Minister as well spoke recently rejecting the position of Tegarai interim government TPLF. PM Abi addressed this question. What did he say? He did not take a clear position. But then we have been hearing that Ridwan Hussain at the recent uh, Africa Union uh, Tegarai federal government meeting said that uh, Eritrea was only in control of territories given to Eritrea under Algiers agreement according to the Boundary Commission's decision. But PMRB did not confirm that Eritrea is in control of territories given to it under uh, Algiers agreement. 
Rather, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia announced to form a committee. The committee will look into the claims of the Tiger ISI. The committee will have members uh, from Ethiopian National Defense Force and from Tiger authorities. This committee will jointly work and prepare a report uh, submitted to the Prime Minister. Will be submitted to the Prime Minister. The committee will tell uh, who is telling the truth. Is it a military in occupation of Tigray territories or not? So, uh, Abi uh, took a balanced position, did not reject Tigray's position. At the same time, he did not criticize Erati, he did not confirm Erati military presence in Tigray. Let's see when this committee will be established. Will the committee ever be established or he just uh, tackled the question? by announcing the formation of the committee that remains to be seen. Secondly, the man slammed the Tegra representatives when he said that uh, you people should speak the truth. How did the war break out? How did uh, three phases of the war break out? Tegra war was fought in three phases, we know that. First phase from November 2020 till June 2021. Second phase from uh, the end of uh, and the start of uh, July 2021 till almost October, November 2021. And the last phase in August, I think, August uh, 2022 till November when Pretoria was signed. Uh, uh, he implied that uh, it was Tegarai, it was TPLF which initiated the war. Did not say it clearly, but he said that, that that is what happened. There is consensus on our side. You should also tell the truth what happened, what led to the start of the war. While Gatacho was sitting alongside him, with him, did not hesitate from accusing Tegarai. Uh, he talked about the TPLF top Tegarai leaders joining the federal government too reportedly. He said that he offered Sad Khan to uh, join the federal government as health minister, but he declined. So it means that he is eager uh, to have TPLF, TDF top men in Addis Ababa as part of federal government. But uh, maybe offer was not very attractive for Sad Khan. Sad Khan, uh, as health minister, does not make sense. The man has uh, vast military experience, security uh, related experience. So he should be appointed to a position of uh, his choice and where he can deliver uh, as uh, a former head of the military. He talked about the return of IDPs to a question was asked about TPLF2. Uh, he addressed these uh, questions uh, in a very blunt manner, and some questions were handled by him very diplomatically too. But uh, Abi does not uh, want to take a pro Tegarai or pro Eritrea position. He wants to remain balanced. That is why he has announced the formation of the committee. Let's see when this committee will be established. By the way, we've seen meetings between Amhara representatives, NPM, Romia representatives from MPM, etc. But Tegai representatives came fully prepared. They asked some very tough questions. That is why maybe he told them to speak the truth, that uh, tell the people how the war uh, started. Uh, between Tigray and Federal government. Secondly, was the Eritrean Information Ministry issued a statement a few hours ago. The statement came after a UN Assistant Secretary General called Eritrea a lawless country. Ilze uh, Brands is UN Assistant Secretary General for Human Rights. Few days ago, when UN Human Rights Council held a meeting and discussed uh, Eritrean human rights record, 
when UN Special Rapporteur on Eritrea submitted his report as well. The UN Assistant Secretary General called Eritrea a lawless country where uh, there is no religious freedom, where youths are arbitrarily arrested, national service is indefinite, no judiciary, no independent accountability mechanism. And the Assistant Secretary General spoke about alleged presence of Eritrean military in Tigray as well. To which Eritrean ministry responded last night. Eritrean Ministry of Information says that uh, the UN Assistant Secretary General uh, told lies when she leveled allegations against Eritrea based on unsubstantiated claims like presence of Eritrean military in Tigray, which is a lie. By, by the way, this is the official position of Eritrea that there is no Eritrean military in Tigray. That the UN Assistant Secretary General did not verify the facts. Here it is a stable country. Religious tolerance is at its best in the region, only in Eritrea. This campaign against Eritrea allegedly is part of political victimization. Mandate of UN Special Rapporteur on Eritrea must come to an end. The decision to appoint a special rapporteur on Eritrea about human rights was a politically motivated decision and the purpose is uh, to corner Eritrea. So, Eritrean government uh, criticized and rejected the remarks of UN Assistant Secretary General. Every year, whenever UN Special Rapporteur on Eritrea submits his report, his findings to UN Human Rights Council. We see this war of words between UN representatives and Eritrean government. UN representatives say there is no change, no improvement in human rights situation in Eritrea. Eritrea rejects all the reports of UN Special Rapporteur. The Rapporteur has not been allowed to visit Eritrea so far. Years ago, he was appointed as the Special Rapporteur. But so far, not a single visit to Eritrea. So, this war of words will go on. Meanwhile, Eritrea is demanding an end to the mandate of UN Special Rapporteur. But so far, his mandate has not been terminated. But independent uh, sources also confirm that human rights situation in Eritrea is not very enviable. A country with no freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, freedom of media, no independent judiciary. Yes, there are issues in Eritrea. The Eritrean government just portrays Eritrea as if it is a very stable uh, country where there is no corruption, where there is harmony, religious, ethnic harmony. There are no internal conflicts. Yes, there are less internal conflicts in Eritrea. It's mainly due to the action taken by the government forces. Government forces are not held accountable. People uh, suffer. Uh, those who are arrested, who are detained, who are in prison, they are suffering. Basically, there is no rule of law. Rather, uh, an, or, uh, an administration which is uh, in a strong position in the sense that the people are scared. That is why people don't protest. That is why there are no uh, ethnic disputes, religious disputes. Why? Because people are scared that if they are arrested, they'll be in prison forever. This is the reason for relative peace we see in Eritrea. It's not that there are independent uh, democratic institutions, people trust the institutions and that is why there is peace. No, there is peace and stability because people are scared. They don't want to risk their lives. They know if they are thrown into prison once, maybe for their entire lives, they'll have to be in prison. Thank you for watching.